Hey, New Hope, Pastor Kerry here. I hope you can see me. I'm in kind of a subdued setting to go along with a couple points I want to make today. This will be my last time doing this before we start gathering again. So I want to offer one more brief challenge as we prepare in a few days to come together in person. Now, we understand that not everyone will start back up right away. In fact, we're still advising caution for anyone who's in a vulnerable demographic or has health concerns. But regardless of whether you'll be there in person or continue to connect with us online, keep in mind that we all have access far beyond what many Christians around the world experience even to this day. So if we've learned anything over the last couple months, I hope it's a greater appreciation for the freedom that we have to worship together because there are still many places around the world where Christians can only meet in secret, perhaps in house churches or out-of-the-way locations, sometimes like this, under the cover of darkness and often under the threat of persecution or imprisonment or even death. Things that most of us will never come close to experiencing, though we got a small taste of what it might be like to lose the freedom to gather, but we were still able to stay connected through all kinds of media that never were available in the past and still aren't in many places around the world. But I hope that kind of access hasn't diminished our appreciation for being in God's house with God's people. In Psalm chapter 42, verses 1 through 4, the writer expresses a desperate desire to do just that when he says this, As the deer pants for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, for the living God. When can I go and stand before him? Day and night I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking within me as I remember how it used to be as I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sounds of great celebration. You know, that was written by someone who recalls what it was like to gather for worship, but it had been so long that it was only a distant memory. And it's only been a couple months for us, but do we have that level of desire? Do we have that intense thirst for God, that persistent devotion in the face of opposition from those who defy and deny everything that we believe and stand for? How has this time of distancing and restriction affected your appreciation and desire to come together for worship and ministry with other believers? I think for the most part, we've really missed one another and we're anxious to start gathering again. But if we're honest, there are probably some ways where it's become easier to carry on without that kind of involvement. But during our time apart, I hope that our desire for community has grown and that we'll never take that freedom for granted. We lost a bit of that freedom for just a few weeks, but for many believers around the world, this is a way of life and they don't even have the ability or liberty to meet online or to send out an encouragement or to communicate in any way for spiritual purposes. Some don't even have access to a Bible. If they could get even a hold of, of one page torn from the scripture, it would become their most prized possession. It would get passed around entire villages. And just imagine not having any of the connections that we've enjoyed even during this time. Imagine uh, having to meet in secrecy or being denied access to the reading or teaching of God's word. What would that type of restriction do to your faith? Would your faith even endure? Would it grow? Would your life still stand out as being different from those who don't believe if all those benefits that we enjoy were stripped away? You know, the book of Esther uh, depicts a time when God's people were exiled among a, a foreign land and one of the leaders there was trying to look for a way to annihilate the Jews and he came to the king to make his case and said, King, there is a people scattered amongst the provinces of your nation whose ways and customs are different from all other people and it's not in our best interest to tolerate them. And you know, you could think, well, yeah, the Jews had their ways, you know, they met in their synagogues and, and had the sacrificial system and their various laws and so forth, but the book of Esther took place during a time when the people were exiled in a foreign land and all those privileges had been taken away from them. And so I think about us today. What if we were to lose or all of our religious freedoms were taken away and the, the opportunities, the things that we rely on for our Christian experience and our testimony, the ability to gather together, the freedom to talk openly about our faith, the access we have to God's word and all kind of biblical resources, things that we tend to rely on for our spiritual identity. If you took all that away, 
would there still be enough of a difference in our lives that it would be obvious and undeniable to others? I think if we're honest, uh, there's not often a lot of difference between believers and non-believers when it comes to how we interact with people or what we do for entertainment or how we carry on our business and live our lives. We rely on our connection to the church and, and, and other spiritual liberties and our access to God's word, but in practice, there may not be much of a difference between us and anyone else. And, and there should be a difference. There should be a contrast as evident as this candle in the darkness because that's what we're to be, light in a dark world. In my last devotion, I mentioned Jesus' words in, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16 that said, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. But unless people can see a difference in us, they're not going to see any need to change, let alone to believe in or to honor God. You know, there's a lot of talk right now about if and when life will get back to normal. In fact, many people are emphasizing a, a new normal, a way of, a way of life that may be different from here on. And in many ways, that could le lead to losing some of our freedoms. But in other ways, a new normal would not be a bad thing. And I'm not talking in, in physical terms of social distancing or what we do about public gatherings or tracking what people are doing. I'm I'm talking about a new normal in terms of, of our spiritual life and practice. Because if the previous norm was to be more reserved in our faith and, you know, to keep to ourselves and to rely on, you know, what you got on Sundays for the bulk of your faith and discipleship, then perhaps a new normal uh, would be a welcome change. But if all we come out of this with is being more apt to show up when the doors are open, to serve when we have the opportunity, and to be more proactive in sharing our faith— then a new normal will be a welcome change for all of us. So as we prepare to come together again, I, I leave you with, this, with these three challenges. First of all, uh, be grateful and never take for granted the opportunity that we have to worship together and to connect in so many ways, even when we can't be together. And when we are together, be ready to worship and to receive from God's word. The second thing is take full advantage of that freedom by getting involved in some form of ministry or service that benefits and encourages others. If you're not already in a class or a small group, find one. Our goal is that everyone would connect somewhere and serve somewhere. And three, finally, that uh, we would all be more ready than ever before to be a godly influence on those around us, ready to serve them, ready to pray for them and to share with them verbally uh, and materially the grace of God and the blessings that he's given to us. So get ready to exercise your freedom to worship and to serve openly and to do so with a grateful heart. And when we come back together, we'll all be better for it. And for those who are still in vulnerable demographics, we encourage you to use discretion uh, on when you feel comfortable returning. Uh, we understand that we may not see everyone for a while, but until that time comes when we can all be together, continue to be at peace, to keep the faith, and we will all be together soon.